You ever want to go raid someone and then realize that, oh, I'm too small of a creator. I can't raid this person. I'm going to be judged if I raid this person. Or maybe you did raid somebody and they laughed at your view count They're like, oh, ha, ha, ha. your view count is too small to raid me. And then it just makes you feel terrible. Well, it seems like something like that had happened uh, recently in one of my streams. And so I would like to kind of talk about that. But before we get into that, hi, hello, welcome to Mari Monday, where I answer questions that you all ask me from my marshmallow. And I have quite a roster of questions to go through this week. So let's get right into it. Also, I apologize if my voice is a little scuffed right now because I have been doing a really long charity stream all weekend with my friend Odyssey Yerobi to help raise money for F it Up Cancer. So my voice is a little parched right now. Anyways, let's start with our first marshmallow here. As a VTuber, is there anything I should keep an eye on for this Black Friday? Oh boy, that's right. Black Friday sales are gonna be coming pretty soon. They're already doing early Black Friday sales. Oh boy, well, hmm. I think if you are completely just starting your VTubing journey, then I would definitely say get a webcam, get a nice microphone. Doesn't have to be a dynamic one or like a GoXLR or anything, just a nice microphone that will help enhance your voice. You know, let's move away from the headset mics, you know? <laughs> and yeah, I say get either a microphone, a webcam to track your model, and honestly, a nice if you're, if you're gonna use a phone, like an iPhone to do your facial tracking, then get a nice phone stand. I really like this one called Ulanzi that I'll definitely link down below. Maybe they might have like a deal. And I like this foam stand because it has a little cooling fan on it. So if I'm doing a long stream, because after like an hour, my phone starts to overheat for my VTubing tracking program. So I like to turn that fan on to help keep my phone cool so it's not being overheated because otherwise it starts charging, your tracking doesn't really go as good. And yeah, I highly recommend that. Other than that, it's just your classic, like if you want to upgrade anything on your computer, that would be the best time to do it. But I think like the necessities is something to track your VTuber application or um, a nice microphone and then a phone stand. Mm -hmm. All right, let's eat our next marshmallow. Should larger VTuber projects that differentiate from your usual content be put on the same YouTube channel or a new YouTube channel? I'm mostly a programming VTuber, but working on a stage play where I puppet various VTuber models to present a story as a personal project. This is honestly a great question because I often get asked if you should like separate your channel's content or how do you know when to separate your YouTube content since I myself have many different YouTube channels. And something that I will tell a lot of like clients that I work with when it comes to YouTube is that it really just comes down to who your content is for, like what type of audience it is. Like if your content is that different from your usual content, then typically it's recommended to put it on a separate channel because the theory behind it is, let's say you do a lot of Call of Duty Let's Plays and you just play a lot of Call of Duty, you might do some commentary on top of it, it's just you're all like FPS on that. And then you want to play something like Minecraft, which is completely different. It'd be one thing if you're playing a different FPS, like you decided to go with CSGO. And that would be something that I would say, oh yeah, keep that on the same channel because they're adjacent to each other. Like they're different games, but they are they are adjacent in the sense of they're both FPS type of games. And it depends on what kind of content you're doing with that, whether it's just strictly let's play or advice or tutorials or commentary those are the kind of things that you can kind of like use to essentially make more variety of your content but if it's something completely different where the type of audience who would be most likely to watch call of duty stuff is more likely to watch valorant or csgo but maybe they're not really that willing to watch minecraft stuff so for you, if you are a programming VTuber and the majority of your YouTube content is about you being a programmer and then you want to have this like type of content where you puppet various VTuber models to present a story, you could possibly keep that on the same channel if you can tie it into like programming, like maybe show the behind the scenes on how you puppeteered all these different VTuber models. That's like the only thing I could think of to like make it on the same type of niche. Or you could just make this as like a one-off thing where it's like, yeah, I do programming stuff, but this is something else that I like to do. It might not get as many views if your programming stuff is the breadwinner content on there. But it's one of those rules where it's like a, 
two for them, one for me, where this is like your own fun thing that you want to do on this channel. I don't think you necessarily have to make a completely different channel, especially if you don't plan on making those videos that often. It's like a good, like you said, a personal project. And I think keeping that on the same channel should be fine. All right, let's read our next question. How do you know what to post things on said platforms like Twitter and YouTube and things like that? And well, it really comes down to just what type of audience you have on each platform like i know for me on twitter especially twitter and then maybe blue sky i haven't tested out that much but twitter i have a lot of like aspiring vtubers who follow me and on my main youtube channel i also have a lot of aspiring vtubers who watch me but i also have other people who are just a fan of my content and who just like these silly little conversation videos that i do and like the video game stuff so i have a mixed audience of people on my youtube channel and so knowing this i think about which audience watches more of my content on my main channel which is aspiring vtubers and actually aspiring artists i have a lot of artist viewers like people who want to learn how to make art and so knowing that i focus content that i think would benefit them whereas on twitter because i know a lot of aspiring vtubers like to follow me on there i try to give out some good advice on there occasionally to kind of help them out but I honestly just like to post things that I think will brighten up someone's timeline because well, there's just so much negativity on Twitter and just social media in general is very negative. So I've been noticing that I've been getting a lot of people who are not necessarily aspiring VTubers, but kind of like just like me. So originally I used to just make a lot of advice stuff because that's how I knew who my audience was. But as time has shifted and as my audience has shifted, I'm making stuff that I think would make their day and make them happy instead of it being like a hey look at this cool thing I'm doing I'm just like tweeting things like hey I hope you're having a good day I hope this post is bringing you a smile I'm posting funny memes to kind of brighten your day up it really just comes down to who is your audience what are their pain points like what do they need what's going to help them and then making content that will help them and helping doesn't necessarily mean a tutorial like i think a lot of people confuse the word help or oh i have to like solve a math problem for them it's like no you could be helping them by brightening their mood with some really pretty art or saying a very nice message in like a tweet things like that is a way to like help an audience so that's how i figure out how to do it in terms of like you want something a bit more nuanced i do talk about this a lot more in my members only streams because i sit down and i break down like tweets and like vtuber content and just youtube content and like why things work the way they do on certain platforms i will definitely link that in the video below if you'd like to check that out but to kind of like summarize those types of streams that i do basically twitter really likes it when you keep people on the platform YouTube really likes it when you keep people on the platform. So making content that keeps people on those platforms is the best type of stuff to post. So and not linking people to go watch your streams and stuff because they don't like that. Unless if it's a YouTube stream, YouTube will just do it on their platform. And other than that, it's like posting stuff that you would genuinely want to see like stuff that makes you stop scrolling makes you want to retweet and like and comment there's a reason for that that's the kind of stuff that you can also post and tie it into your own content all right let's read the next question i'm thinking of expanding my streams to also do art and music should i make a separate youtube channel for the algorithm i'm still very small don't even have 10 subscribers on youtube yet i feel like if you don't even have like 10 subscribers on youtube yet then no don't make a separate channel for all the things that you want to do post all of it on one channel and see what does well and now i know some people might disagree with me like other youtube gurus disagree to say hey like you should keep it very strict on like certain channels or certain things however if you are a personality streamer where it's like you are a vtuber you want people to kind of like you for you and the creative endeavors that you're doing then you're building a personal brand and part of having a personal brand gives you the luxury of posting art and music and other things that really inspire you like your projects because it's your personal branding now those videos may do well they may not do well you won't know unless if you post them. And the reason why this is important is because when you are just starting out and you are completely new to YouTube, it's better to post all these different types of videos on the channel so you can see what does well. 
What do people respond to? What is resonating? And if you notice that your art is doing way better than your music, then now you know you can turn your YouTube channel into an art channel. Maybe sprinkle music in there occasionally, or if you really feel like music belongs on a second channel, that's when you can make that decision later on. But you're not going to know what is doing well unless if you start posting it and then seeing what is being picked up by the algorithm which by the way algorithm is just another fancy way to say people what do people like from you all right let's read our final marshmallow for today hi mari or mari's mods never sure who to adjust these to i hope this isn't a bother to ask as a retrospective but as a baby vtuber i'm still trying to find my way with a lot of this stuff so apologies if this is an inconvenience during your recent f it up charity stream i almost went to send a rape to it into you I try to wrap up moving my small following to support friends, and I only really follow friends and a few Twitch VTubers I look up to. So the view count put your stream on my radar, but then I saw it was someone I consider a big name and not someone I directly know. So I had reservations and chose not to risk it. On reflection, I realized that you were likely running outside of your usual times, which is why the viewer count was within the range I'd normally consider. I also realized it's unlikely to occur again, but mostly just for peace of mind, I would like to know if such a move would have been welcomed. Thank you. And this um, VTuber had included their name, but I am going to censor it just in case if there are any like bad apples here who might try to harass or send hate, because this is like a very personal marshmallow to ask i'm actually a little surprised i had no idea that um this person was considering to raid me for the charity stream that i was doing the other day and the charity stream f it up is a wonderful charity to help fight against cancer um they we we had uh, helped raise over fifteen thousand dollars it was me and a bunch of other vtubers and it was all hosted by um a good friend of mine named odyssey Eurobeats. And I'm, I'm like a little bummed out that um, this person chose not to raid me because even though my view, like my, okay, if I'm understanding this, my Twitch stream, or I'm, a, I'm guessing it's Twitch because I typically don't get raids on YouTube that often, but my viewer count was low. So this person was like, oh, this is a, like a small streamer. I'll go raid them. Then they saw my stream, realized it was mari you may and then realize oh wait this person is too big so i don't want to risk raiding them i hope i'm understanding that correctly because if that is the case that really that really bums me out like <laughs> i normally stream between i want to say it really depends sometimes i stream from 4 p.m pst to 8 p.m pst and sometimes i'll do a really late stream like i'll stream from 9 p.m pst to like midnight it just depends i don't really stream that much because i'm more of a youtuber i focus on making youtube videos like this and like talking but when it comes to like streams i use my live streams as a way for like my diehard bobas like my my big fans you know like my my special bobas who want to come and get a more intimate and personal conversation with me that's why i live stream so i typically don't expect my live stream numbers to be very big um i usually average between 30 ccv to sometimes 50 it depends which is a very amazing number by the way 30 to 50 people is phenomenal especially since like i mostly just kind of sit there being smooth brain being like tease tease so i'm so sorry that my name had intimidated you um, that, that really does bum me out because I would have been so happy to have had your raid. I even welcome like one viewer raids where it's just the person. I always will, will welcome those types of raids. It doesn't matter like the size of the raid. I will always welcome it and be happy about it because to me, you chose my stream and you entrusted me with your viewers to entertain them for a little bit while you go rest from a long streaming day. And I really appreciate that stuff, especially since I was doing a charity stream to help raise money for, you know, to fight against cancer. And so what I would like to say for for you, this this creator, um, please don't worry if like you think that you're out of this league and like you don't deserve to raid a, a, what you perceive as like a bigger creator, because that is 
very like a bummer. It's like it's a bummer, you know? It's like you're you're doubting yourself and you're preventing yourself from being able to make a connection and like make me aware of who you are. Granted, you did include your username. Most people would like not include their username in these marshmallows. Typically, I don't get a lot of people who leave their names behind in these. So I am more than happy to reach out to you and I probably will just to let you know like, hey, it is totally okay to raid me. I will never judge you. I will never be upset over like a raid. I, 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 I under, and I understand. I talked to my mods about this because I was like sitting here thinking, do I, I was like mods, do I come off as like someone who would be upset about raids? And they're like, no, but they did explain to me how I guess there are some streamers who get offended by like, the raid number which is just weird like i don't understand why people would be upset be like oh your raid is too small you can't raid me that makes no sense like if there is if there is one thing you can take away from today's video is that if someone ever tries to tell you like oh you can't raid someone because your numbers are too small they're not a good person like they are not a good person <laughs> you should not listen to someone who is like telling you what to do you know like especially if it's something that you want to do don't be afraid to like raid if someone is getting genuinely upset that you raided with a small number they're kind of a terrible person not you you're not a bad person for thinking of this streamer and i understand i've seen the horror stories on twitter like sometimes yes that this does happen those people suck most of the time like 99% of the time, people are very happy to receive a raid, regardless of the size. Sometimes we do miss the raid notification or other notifications to people subscribe or donate because we're busy like in the moment or something. But typically, I even myself and other streamers, we do get back to look at the notifications and thank people who are there. I also have an amazing mod team who will give shout outs and also thank people who do raids for me if I currently can't say anything. It is never my intent to make someone feel belittled or feel bad about their account. And please, 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 please don't put me on a pedestal because like it makes me feel like I am like bashing on people's numbers. And I that is not my intention at all. I do not want to do that at all because I know what it feels like to have a big creator make you feel small and i don't ever want to do that to someone so please next time if you ever want to raid me again you're more than welcome to and you're gonna be surprised i'm probably still gonna be at the same ccvs you saw me last time because again my live streams are for people who are my diehard bobas who want to be really close to me and yes that is a much smaller percentage of my youtube subscriber account which is fine that is normal that is actually a normal ratio because the people who hang out with you in your live streams really really like you and your content versus like the stuff you post on social media or on youtube those are people who are kind of like more casual fans they like your stuff but like you know a live stream is a long commitment some people like polished videos and i think that's fair i i also can't stick around for live streams that long i like to have watch polished videos too there's nothing wrong with that so please don't don't judge me based off of my name and expect that i'm going to have like this crazy amount of viewers just because it's me that doesn't that doesn't translate that's not realistic <laughs> so i hope that could help Quelm any anxieties or fears because there's a good chance that there are other people who probably are afraid to raid me too because of that exact same mentality and this is my little PSA to say hey I'm not going to judge you for your view count if you are thinking about me and you want to just come say hi please do I might not always be able to answer right away but that does not mean I am looking down on you <laughs> And with that being said, everybody, that is all for today's Mari Monday. Thank you so much for taking this time with me today. And if you did happen to be in the charity stream for the F it up or cancer, I am very happy that we all got to hit $15,000. 
there's a lot of amazing rewards that are going to be coming from this um i will also leave a link to odyssey eurobeat stream if you would like to check out her vods i have my vods up on my page here because we hit those milestones i got to do some really fun things with my voice odyssey is wearing a sexy bunny outfit with her IRL self so you know not her model and she's going to be doing a wonderful song cover collab with the matara from free sojo so very exciting things that happened i'm really happy that we made that goal so thank you all so much for watching and if you would like to leave a question on my marshmallow for the next mari monday i'll leave that link down below thanks for watching and for supporting me remember everybody everything reminds you of something bye seriously i can't believe i used to talk in that one voice that is just I, and that is what made my career